Hilliard be the most important woman in Chandler this evening. Now I know people how people feel about following me. I don't know how I'm going to follow this. That was an amazing presentation. I think I understand the state's budget better now than I ever have in my entire life. So. I thank Sorry. you for that. <laughs> I'm going to do this really, really quickly to keep us on time and be respectful and get you out of here quickly. The first thing I want to call attention to is something that my esteemed colleague sitting next to me at the table, I started meetings at about 6.30 this morning, so I didn't really get to look online or the newspaper or anything. So um, he informed me that we are at CNBC has Chandler ranked today on their online survey as 12th best city to live in the country. Wow. about what, what he was sharing with me is that those 12 that are in there and I will let you know that there's no other Arizona city in the top 20. Wow. Um, but what he was sharing, what Mike was sharing with me, I keep saying he, what Mike was sharing with me was that in all of those, those cities that are there, it seems to be that their focus on leadership and economic development seems to be the key between all of those top 20 communities. So I can hardly get to get back to the office and read that and send it out to our PIOs. So <laughs> really exciting news and fun to get today. You know, just a couple things I'll touch bases on. I have a list, but we'll wait till Mayor State of the Cities in a couple of weeks, and so he'll cover a lot more. I'll, I'll go ahead and miss some of this stuff. Um, just kind of some of the most exciting things. If you haven't read your newspaper yet today, the San Marcos Hotel has closed with a buyer. I don't mean it closed. It, it now has a buyer. Uh, they are uh, Interwest Capital, and they will be running the San Marcos Hotel as a hotel. We met with them during their due diligence process, but we'll be meeting with them again in the near future to kind of understand their plans for that hotel. So very exciting news that that Grand Dam now has a, an owner and will be moving forward there. If you didn't make it to Infusionsoft's grand opening the other night, it was on the news yesterday morning. Their 92,000 square foot building has a football field in the middle of it. They're at 350 jobs. They plan to grow to 1,000 jobs here in Chandler. Um, and they just received $54 million in venture capital from Goldman Sachs. So this is a company to watch. It is moving forward. Uh, as we look, it, it, let's switch on to, um, I'm just going to work through my list fast and I'll see if I can talk even faster. Um, restaurants that have opened recently, if you haven't been there, Nando's Mexican restaurant opened over um, at the northeast corner of Dobson and Germain where Oregano's is and, and Uncle Bear's. We ate there, James and I ate there. Oh my gosh, the food was so good. I'm a foodie, so Mexican <laughs> food is particularly important to me and it was incredibly, incredibly good. Chop has opened at downtown Ocotillo, the southeast corner of Queen Creek and Price. Went there and had a, a wonderful steak and I won't say martini, but I did. And it was <laughs> a phenomenal service and absolutely great food. Um, down at the new Target that opened at Ocotillo and Arizona Avenue, there are buildings that are being built right now, and the signs are out so I can say them. Um, Jimmy John's, Five Guys, and Starbucks will be opening at those locations in the near future. Firehouse Subs opened up by J.C. Penney's at, Queen, at um, Germain and Gilbert. Um, Pruitt's, of course, opened in April, and I think it's kind of, so much has been happening in a whirlwind, we've all forgotten about Pruitt's opening in the old Albertsons at, at Ray and Alma School. The store is doing gangbusters, and it's just got gorgeous furniture. I highly recommend that you go over there and take a look at it. Banner Health Medical Center is under construction at the southeast corner of Alma School and the 202. So as you drive by, you'll see that going through. But then not to be outdone, our own Chandler Regional Medical Center is under construction with a $125 million capital investment project and 100 new beds for in another tower for Chandler Regional Medical Center. And I know it's been all over the news, but it is being updated to a level one trauma. They're going through their certification for a level one trauma unit. And that is, when you read in the paper, you think, oh, that's cool, what does that mean? I can get health, I can get services. I can tell you from an economic development recruitment statistic, that is significant. And all joking aside, we do work with companies that as they're coming in from the UK or China or New York or Boston or other places that haven't been there before, they still think we're a Wild West community. No joke, my right hand, I have actually had someone say to me before, well, if someone gets sick in the, in Chandler, what do you do? <laughs> well, we give a slug of whiskey and we take a hold of that. <laughs> so you know, to be able to tell those as, as, you know, advantages in your community are from an economic development recruitment opportunity, that was significant news for us. 
Uh, QBE has opened. They opened in the former Bank of America building just east of Air Products, right across the street from this building. They are moving 700 jobs into that building and will be growing to about 1,100 jobs. Uh, we have, let's see, I'm reading my notes quickly. Um, What's QBE? Oh, it stands for Queensland Bank Enterprises. <coughs> it's a mortgage banking division out of Australia. And they, are a, they were a division that was acquired from Bank of America. So we were able to retain those 700 jobs right here in the community. We competed nationally to lose, actually lose those 700 jobs um, to other locations. So for us, that was significant. James and I worked closely on that project to keep it here. If you haven't been out to see Continuum, the infrastructure's done. Uh, that was a, a partners, public-private partnership between the city of Chandler and Capital Commercial Investment. It is stunning. I was on a tour there yesterday with a very large user and got to see it through that user's eyes. First tour I've been on since the, the, the building's been reskinned and everything's in. It, I can tell you this client was amazed. The look on his face was absolutely amazed as he what, toured the space. What's the building behind it? Uh, that is Cyrus One. It is a, a, right now it's a 300,000 square foot data center. Cyrus One's a division of Cincinnati Bell. So they will be, you know, as you're looking, you're playing with your BlackBerry and you're connecting to everything and data is downloading very quickly. Those are the kind of buildings that that comes out of. You swipe your credit card and it says ta da ta, good swipe, and you're approved. Those are the buildings that it comes out of. So, so no, not too many people. Only about 50. Only about 50 jobs in that. But a well-rounded, sustainable community will have industries of all disciplines. They won't focus on one very <coughs> specific area. Even a, a you know, the technology semiconductor wafer industry. You don't want all your, your jobs in that basket because when the industry goes, your whole community goes. You've got to be well-rounded, got to be across the board. So we're working hard on that. You'll notice there are a number of multifamily housing projects that are going up around Chandler. People keep saying to us, is that too much? Are there too many projects under construction? Wow, we're going to have a tipping point with multifamily. You have to understand for five years, we, we typically added about 5,300 units across the region per year. In 2007, we stopped adding. We went five years without adding a single high-density residential project. We've got some catching up to do. And not only that, but the economy is changing. The, the socioeconomic makeup of Arizona is changing. And the millennials, they want turnkey. They don't want a big backyard with a pool in a, in a, you know, in a suburb in South Chandler. They want the turnkey lifestyle on a transportation corridor. So that's what we're focusing on is keeping Chandler relevant. But we, we're working closely with planning so we don't overbuild, we don't make dumb decisions, and we don't give our industrial land up. Uh, a couple of, of different things. I can't tell you who yet, but I can tell you that there are restaurants that are beginning their tenant improvement. Saute, Old Chicago, and Michaels now have restaurant tenants that will be opening in very short order. If you haven't been to Amalfi's yet, they opened up in the native New Yorker space that was over at um, Chandler Heights and Alma School. Absolutely delicious Italian food. It's a really cool little place. A quick update on U of A and ASU. I'm going fast. A quick update on U of A and ASU. U of A continues to expand their programs in the community center. Uh, they are adding another program in there as we speak. Um, on the, and I've forgotten what it is. I wish it's part of their outreach college and I can't remember the name of the program. Arizona State University is, hopes to select a, 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 JO, a CM at risk contractor in the next few days. And then they'll be off to the races at the old Chicago yard in downtown, moving their Center for Te uh, Technology and Innovation and Tech Shop into that space. Uh, just a couple of quick reminders of events that are coming up. Chandler Gilbert Community College will be hosting its annual Champagne and Chocolate on February 8th. If you haven't gotten tickets for it yet, it's a phenomenal event and it sponsors scholarships for the kids that you know meet in that higher education need. So it's a, a tremendous event. You can do silent auctions and bid on all kinds of terrific stuff. And then finally, our Science and Technology Festival will be held on the 13th of February, the 15th of February, and the 16th of February. 13th is the Tech Crawl, Innovations, Intel, and Air Products. If you've never toured those facilities, they're open, their doors. These are highly secured facilities. The, the moment we're done, those facilities shut down and you can't walk in there again until next year. So I highly recommend the tour, 5.30 to 9 o'clock. Uh, downtown, of, uh, our, our Art of Science will be in downtown Chandler, our normal art walk on Friday night. But this time there's a partnership with 48 West. 48 West will be sponsoring all kinds of really cool country bands to be playing. And these country bands, Mogion, if you don't know Mogion, it's an Arizona band 
will be downtown playing as well. And they have a following of about 1,500. Come early and park in the city parking structure because it's going to shut down. And then we have 44 booths that will be taken up for the Saturday event for um, the, the good old-fashioned art, uh, good old-fashioned science fair where you've got Air Products and Intel and Chandler Gilbert and Orbital Sciences and, and you know, University of Arizona and Arizona State and ATI and, and all kinds of companies that will be doing hands-on activities for kids on Commonwealth in downtown Chandler. The streets will be shut down. We'll have helicopters. We'll have um, just blow everything up that we can possibly blow up. Drives the risk insurance people the city crazy when I have an idea. So um, they'll be working on, on all of that together. And I highly recommend you come. It's 1030 to 3 on that on the 16th. If you haven't brought your kids, it really puts the cool back in geek, the cool back in technology and science. And people say, why would economic development focus on that? Because we're creating our next workforce. We want to create that next technology workforce uh, as we're moving forward. So um, I have a whole big list, but we'll give them to the mayor for the state of the city, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, yes. Price Road's got orange signs everywhere. Price Road has orange signs everywhere. What? Any thing going in, or is that just... <laughs> if I could tell you, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. <laughs> so the, very soon, announcements will be made. The whole street seems to be orange. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got more. We've been a busy team. Yes, ma'am. Any progress on this building across the street? Bless its heart. <laughs> oh. Elevation, Elevation Chandler. Chandler. <laughs> you know that the Hilton, Jay, are you in here? There he is at the back. Um, he promises me a seat on his roof for the implosion. <laughs> is that close? It is, uh, I, we don't know yet. We, it continues the bank. It's in possession of the bank, at least finally, it's through its legal hurdles. It's in possession of the bank, and there are, they're working with a number of entities who are interested in that very valuable land. So keep your fingers crossed, throw good karma to the wind, and I'm going to be up on that roof because I am watching that sucker go down. <laughs> I did too. One more question. Or not. Or not. Terrific. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I want to thank you um, for being here today on behalf of the Chandler Chamber. And I also want to thank our sponsors, SRP. Truly, thank you, thank you. Um, we couldn't do this without you. Along with Rogers Corporation, East Valley Tribune, and of course, the city of Chandler. The next economic update will be the last Wednesday in March. Please mark it on your calendar. We have a whole aviation theme. We have people from Sky Harbor coming out. We have Phoenix Gateway Airport. And of course, our very own economic development um, uh, committee um, from the city. They also manage the Chandler Municipal Airport. So you're going to get to hear all about aviation and how that has a huge impact on our economic development and moving Chandler forward. So again, thank you to um, Secretary of State Ken Bennett and of course, um, Christine Mackey. I won't say the most important lady again. <laughs>